All right, let's get something straight. You and I know a bad corn fritter when we see one. And this is a bad corn fritter. It's not crispy at all. I'm gonna open it up. You can see it's nothing more than a squishy pancake with a few corn kernels thrown in. I love a corn pancake, that is not a corn fritter. Now we're gonna do a lot better and Keith is gonna show us exactly the right way to make righteous corn fritters. So achieving the perfect corn fritter with a crisp exterior, moist interior, and big corn flavor was a lot more difficult than we expected. Now, the problem was the flour, the flour that binds everything mm -hmm. together. Too much flour and it's bready like a pancake. Right. Too little, it's all over the front of you when you try to eat it. It's a crap. So the solution to our problems was in front of us the whole time, the corn. Let me show you. All right. So I have two years of corn here. I'm just gonna strip the kernels off this. I like to do this into a large bowl and that will kind of corral those kernels as they come off the ears. We have about one and a half cups of kernels in this bowl. Like I said, the flour is a real problem, but the flour is what holds the corn together. Now we needed to find something that would take place of that flour. So we figured that we would use the starches that are naturally occurring in the corn to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this corn, we're gonna put it in our food processor and make a nice puree that will hold everything together. Okay. We're gonna just buzz this for about 15 to 20 seconds until that corn is broken down into a coarse puree. Okay, I think that's good. You can see that it's nice and coarse, but in processing this corn, we're releasing a lot of great corn flavor, which was good for the fritters, but we're also releasing a lot of water, which was bad for the fritters. Right. So I'm just gonna transfer this over to a 12 inch nonstick skillet. You can start to see how milky that is. We wanna get rid of that milk. Driving off the excess moisture is gonna concentrate the flavor too. That's but you're right. right, if you hadn't done this, you would have had to add a lot more flour to it, and then you end up with that terrible pancake. So we're just gonna cook this over medium heat for about five minutes. Okay, it's five minutes and our corn puree is really thick. Very thick. Yeah, it's clinging to our spatula. And we've got a little browning on the bottom mm -hmm. here. That's okay. We really like that kind of sweet, roasty flavor that the puree took when it got a little dark. So I'm just gonna transfer this over to our large bowl, scraping out as much as that stuff I can get off the bottom of that. I mean, that's a quarter of the volume probably that you started off with. Now I'm gonna rinse this skillet out and we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay. So we like that roasty flavor that we got from cooking that puree. So we're gonna do the same thing with the remainder of the corn that's in our fritters. I have one and a half cups of kernels here, one teaspoon of oil, and it's over medium high heat. We're just gonna add our corn kernels and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We're just gonna let this cook for three to four minutes. Okay, you can see that we've got some light golden brown color on our kernels and you can smell that really roasty aroma. It smells Beautiful. so good. So I'm just gonna transfer this over with our puree and now we're just gonna make our batter and we can get to cooking. That sounds good. So we've built some great corn flavor here with that puree and the lightly brown kernels, but now we want to balance that sweetness out a little bit. So I have two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese here. That's going to add a little saltiness, a little bit of umami flavor. I have three tablespoons of minced chives. That's going to give our fritters a little bit of freshness, a little bit of that onion flavor. Very nice. A pinch of cayenne pepper for heat, a quarter teaspoon of salt to so bring all those flavors together and an eighth teaspoon of pepper gonna stir this up, incorporate those things in there. The corn kernels that Keith added, it was a one and a half cups that you toasted alone. That's right. how much corn kernels, even less than a lot of people put in their total corn fritter, but used exactly the same amount as a puree. So you're right. getting double corn We've doubled flavor. down. Love it. So I have one lightly beaten egg here. That with the corn puree is gonna start to bind everything together, hold everything together. Stir that in and flour. We needed some flour to hold everything together, but I have a small amount, just a quarter cup. But a quarter cup of flour wasn't giving us that crispy exterior we wanted. So we searched around, we tried some breadcrumbs, we tried other things to give it a crisp exterior, but we settled on a tablespoon of cornstarch to give us the crispest exterior we could find. So let's talk about why we are adding cornstarch to our fritters. Cornstarch is made of microscopic pure starch granules. They hydrate and swell in the batter and then swell up and burst when the batter hits the hot oil and that releases amylose starch molecules. These molecules link up and form a lacy network. Now as moisture evaporates during frying, the amylose network becomes brittle and crispy and that translates to perfectly crispy fritters. 
we're about ready to cook. I have a half cup of vegetable oil heating up over medium heat. We want that to shimmer. Okay. We have our batter done, ready to go. But before we get into cooking, I'm gonna make a maple chipotle sauce for our fritters. I have a half a cup of mayonnaise here. I have a tablespoon of chipotle peppers that have been minced up. Getting a little smoky flavor in there. Yeah, and a little bit of spice too, nice. which is nice. One tablespoon of maple syrup, and I have a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard here. It's gonna give a little bit of acidity. This is a big step up from the honey butter that we used to make to serve with corn fritters. I love the idea of a little bit of spice in there too. This is mixed together, and I think we can cook our fritters now. Our oil is at a shimmer. I'm gonna start with uh, this portion scoop. It's a really easy way to get two tablespoons of batter in there without having to measure out each tablespoon. We're gonna put six of these in at a time. A little bit of sizzle around mm -hmm. here. Not too much because you didn't want them to start burning immediately. No, there's a lot of sugar in here, so they are gonna brown quite right. quickly. Now, we don't wanna leave our fritters in little balls like this, so <laughs> I'm just gonna come by with a fish spatula and press these down into a two and a half to three inch diameter. I found a little secret is to dip this spatula in the oil before you try to push it down because that batter is a little sticky. Okay. That way we're gonna have a nice crispy exterior, a little bit of creaminess on the inside. Lovely. We're gonna let these cook two to three minutes until it's golden brown on that first side. Okay, I peek underneath there and I can see that they're golden brown, so I'm just gonna flip these over and cook the second side. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So we're just gonna let that go two to three more minutes on this side. Okay. These are beautifully golden brown on the second side. I'm just gonna take these out and put them over to a paper towel lined tray just to wick some of that excess fat off the okay. outside. Okay. I'm gonna start our second batch. And same thing as the first batch, we're just gonna put these in, flatten them, cook them two to three minutes aside. Sounds great. Are you excited to eat these? So excited. Okay. I know what's gone into them, so I can't wait. One final embellishment is I have another tablespoon of minced chives here. I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the top. Oh, beautiful. And I'm assuming you want sauce too, right? Of course I want sauce. Let's try these. They are beautiful. Now, even before I tuck in, it's super crispy. Oh. Mm. A world away from that floury pancake at the very beginning that just had a few pieces of corn in it. These actually taste like fried corn. It's a really a nice balance of sweet and savory here. The corn flavor is super deep. It's really nice and toasted. As you said, almost roasted. I mean, I've eaten a lot of corn fritters in my day. These are by far the best corn fritters I've ever had. Great, I'm glad you liked them. So if you wanna make the ultimate corn fritters at home, prep corn kernels two ways. Puree and cook half, then toast the other half. Add herbs, parmesan, and for thickener, use both a little bit of flour and some cornstarch. Fry the fritters and serve with a delicious maple chipotle mayonnaise. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, the best corn fritters you will ever have. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Mm-hmm. Summer in a skillet. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.